So you've seen how a theme changes the basic look and feel of your site and a lot of the options that come with even some basic themes in Drupal. Drupal markup isn't the prettiest out of the box, but it's very flexible and extensible. A good theme shows off all the best aspects of your website while maintaining all the speed and flexibility that Drupal brings to the table. In this video, we're going to create a custom theme and we'll illustrate the most important point about understanding theming in that all themes do is override Drupal's core output. Drupal core modules render HTML and the core theme API includes some CSS, but as you'll see, the core output is pretty basic. All right, so for this exercise, once again, you'll need access to the file structure of your website and a text editor, Notepad++ or Text Wrangler, something that allows you to save file names with extensions and Notepad just doesn't do that. Head over to your Drupal 8 site that you've been working on. Once again, you'll see core, libraries, modules, profiles, sites, themes, and vendor. If you click on themes, you'll see the Mayo theme that we installed in the last video. Creating a custom theme in Drupal 8 is actually quite simple. Right click and create a new folder, and let's call this City Guide. This is going to be the name of my theme, and inside the City Guide folder, I need one file. Go ahead and create a new file called cityguide.info.yml. That's for YAML. Now, a couple of things to note here. Number one, your folder structure needs to be lowercase and no spaces, and it can't start with a number. You can have underscores in here, but I honestly usually just keep it all one word. Inside that folder, needs to be an information file about your theme and Drupal themes uses YAML files for this. So let's open that file and type what you see on the screen. This is a key value pair, the key being what's on the left in blue, the value being what's on the right. The key is critical. Go ahead and pause the video and type that in. All right, click save. Head back over to your website and flush your cache. Anytime you mess around with theming, you need to flush your cache. Same is true for module development. When you flush your cache, if everything looks good, you're fine. If you got an error here, you've made a typo here somewhere. So just double check the code. Head over to Appearance. And at the very bottom, you're going to have a new theme called City Guide Theme. Go ahead and click Install and Set as Default. And, well, go back to your site, and it's pretty ugly. This is Drupal core output. No styles, no help, it's just pretty bad. Remember, everything in Drupal theming is overriding core. Let's take a look at the page source. And when you view the page source up here under head, you'll see all of the style sheets have been compressed. Let's go ahead and fix that so we can actually see what's being loaded. Click on Configuration and Development. Find the Performance link. Click on Performance and let's not aggregate CSS files. Click Save and Clear. Now when I go back to my site and view the source, here are all of the CSS files that are being loaded out of the core and out of the module from add to any and admin toolbar. But we don't have any of our own. Well, it's just as easy to set up our own or to connect into a base theme. Head back over to your YAML file and at the bottom, go ahead and add base theme colon Classy. Classy is a base theme that comes with Drupal. All right, hit save. Flush your cache. We'll see a little bit of a change here. But if we look at our source code again, you'll notice now I'm seeing all of the Classy CSS being imported into my site. 
and that's showing up with just a little bit of reflection in the layout. And so creating custom themes in Drupal, while that's a little beyond the scope of this course, this gives you a little bit of a taste for it. On the screen are some reference materials, and of course, you can always take the design and layout class when it's available.